right, we'll start with number two. And as we start these, just I just left these up as a reminder. Um, so two, I'll just draw this really quick. Not too bad. Oh, now it's too bad. Drawing. And they give us these measurements. X is 12 and Y is negative 5. Um, and they want us to find the six trig values. So sine, cosine, on, on, on. So the sine of theta. The sine is Y. There's Y over R. Well, now we need to find R. And R, we can think of as being a part of this triangle here. And a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So 12 squared plus negative 5 squared equals r squared. Uh, 144 plus, now when you square negative 5, you get still a positive, 25, equals r squared. So 144 plus 25, 169. The square root of 169 is 13. So r is 13. So now we can go back to sine. Sine is y over r. So y is negative 5. And r is 13. So negative 5 over 13. Uh, cosine is x over r. So x is 12. And r is 13. The tangent of theta equals y over x. So that's negative 5 over 12. The uh, cosecant of theta is equal to the reciprocal of the sine, so that's negative 13 over 5. The secant is equal to 13 over 12, and the cotangent is negative 12 over 5. Okay, so there you go, there's number two. I'm just remembering these guys here. Um, it's really not something that's too difficult, not something you really have to measure, or not measure, memorize. You can look at this thing, always draw a triangle, and think, oh, the y value is that, uh, that vertical thing, and that's always going to be opposite if I let theta be this guy right here, just right inside there next to the horizontal. And then you can see the triangle, and you can think opposite, adjacent, hypotenuse again. So that's really where these are coming from. All right. Um, next, we'll do number eight. Eight. Now they just tell us the coordinates of some point uh, that's on the terminal side of an angle in standard position. That just means start here, measure this way and find your terminal side. The terminal side is going to be at negative 2410, so like some point out here, and this would be the terminal side. Oh my goodness, that's really bad. Let's get rid of those two. Go there. So that's the terminal side. Here's theta. It's uh, it, coordinates of its point are negative 24 comma 10. We could find radius by going negative 24 squared plus 10 squared equals r squared. So we get negative 24 squared. That's going to be 576 plus 100. That's r squared. And 576 plus 100 is 676. And let's see if that has a square root. That's nice. It does. Uh, so this is 676 equals r squared, and the square root of 676 is 26, so that's r, so this is 26. Uh, so now we go to find the sine, so if, if we treat this as the angle inside of our triangle, we can say the opposite uh, over the hypotenuse, opposite side would be the y value, that would be 10, over this r value, which is 26, and we can make it 5 over 13, Just simplify it cosine is the adjacent side, and we have to uh, remember this is a negative 24, so negative 24 over 26, so we do negative 12 over 13. Uh, the tangent of this angle would be opposite over hypotenuse, opposite side being 10, the y value, over 
x, which is negative 24. So this is negative 5 over 12. The cosecant is a reciprocal of the sine. The secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. So negative 13 over 12. The cotangent is negative 12 over 5. There we go. So they just gave us a point um, and wanted us to find the trig values based on that. Um, next, number 14. Telling us a couple of things. If the secant of some angle is greater than zero, so we could interpret that positive, right? That's, that's a positive number. And in addition to that, the cotangent is less than zero. Um, how could I mean? What, what information could we take from that? Um, well, they want us to find what quadrant it's in. Let's see the quadrant. It's either going to be one, two, three, or four. And these uh, quadrants have uh, uh, different, you know, kind of like properties, I guess. Uh, here, the x is going to be positive. The y is going to be positive. Here, in quadrant 2, the x is going to be negative, y is going to be positive. Both are going to be negative here in quadrant 3. Quadrant 4, positive x, negative y. So um, that should help us. Uh, like, for one thing, the cotangent is less than 0. The cotangent is uh, your x over y. If we go all the way back up to the top, the cotangent is x over y. So x over y has to be less than 0. It has to be negative. That's not going to happen here. Right? X over y will be positive. Not going to happen here either. X over y has to be uh, uh, positive here. So either it's quadrant 2 or quadrant 4. And the other piece of information is that we have the secant of theta is greater than 0. Um, well, what's the secant? The secant is, let's go back up here and see. The secant is r over x. So r over x, r is always going to be positive, but x could be positive or negative. So when we take r over that x value, we have to wind up with uh, a positive value. So r over x has to be positive, so x has to be positive, so we must be in quadrant 4. All right. Um, so now we'll move on to 37. Finding the reference angle for the angle given, um, and then we're going to sketch them in standard position. So, what would be the reference angle for 120? It's very, very helpful when finding the reference angle to draw a picture. Right? Um, so, 120, that's not going to be here. This is only 90, so it's going to be past 90, but not quite all the way to 180. So, it's somewhere in quadrant 2. So this is 120. How are we going to find the reference angle? Remember the reference angle. I'll just write it down. Reference angle. So it's the angle from the terminal side uh, to the nearest horizontal. Horizontal. Uh, so here is the terminal side. Here is the nearest horizontal. Right. This one's far away. This one's close. It's near. So what is the angle between here and the nearest horizontal? Well, it's just the rest of the way to 180. It's the difference between 180 and 120. What do you have to add on to 120 to get to 180? You have to add uh, 60 degrees. Right. 180 minus 120 would give us that missing piece. And that would be 60 degrees. Uh, so they want us to sketch them in standard position. We already sketched 120. Let's just grab another color and we'll sketch, we'll sketch 60. This is 60 degrees. Uh, and so we notice that uh, like the, if we were to give an x and a y value here to this guy here, this one would be just as high. So it had the same y value, and it had the same x value, only the x for here would be the negative of this x here. 
So that would be the exact same values, only the x is negative, and so the sine and cosine um, and tangent and cotangent and so on would take on a negative value sometimes when x was involved. Um, so that's how we use reference angles. Let's do another reference angle problem, number 42. Uh, theta is now a radian, 3 pi over 4 radians. Um, so I always like to sketch this, uh, you know, sketch the angle first. So 3 pi over 4, here's pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 is right here. 4 pi over 4 would be over here, that would just be pi. So here we go. Uh, this much here is 3 pi over 4. Okay, don't go to the degrees, don't say 135, don't uh, give in to that weakness. Uh, just stay in radians, 3 pi over 4. What's going to be this angle here in radians? Uh, how will we get from here down to there? What's that angle, this being pi? Well, same kind of reasoning, pi uh, minus 3 pi over 4. And that, I accidentally wrote as an equal sign. Pi minus 3 pi over 4 is going to give us that angle right there. But we can't do pi minus 3 pi over 4. We need a common denominator, so we have 4 pi over 4. That's the same as pi. Minus 3 pi over 4. Uh, and that would be pi over 4. You can almost see that visually. If this is 3 pi over 4, that would have to be another pi over 4 to get to pi. So this guy down here is pi over 4. The actual angle pi over 4 is over here. Right there. That's pi over 4. So again, just like before, if we give an x comma y over here, uh, in this particular example, this would be the mirror image, so this would have a negative x, but the same y. Uh, this x would be the negative of this x. Uh, so there we go, 37 and 42, a couple of different reference angle problems. Um, let's see. Now we'll do number 61. us the angle of 11 pi over 4, and they want us to find the sine, cosine, and tangent, not all six, just those three, of uh, the angle without using a calculator. Um, so, like if you'll notice on, uh, on page 291, they give us the sine, cosine, and tangent for a lot of common angles, and uh, so it's going to be really useful to try and get this in terms of one of those angles. So first we need to find 11 pi over 4. So this is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pi over 4. So we're going to find the sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, and we're going to find a reference angle, and that reference angle is always going to land uh, somewhere between 0 and pi over 2 radians. Um, well, let's see. First, uh, I can't do like pi minus 11 pi over 3. Or le sorry, 11 pi over 4. That's not going to work out the same as it did with our others, uh, other problems for reference angles. So it would be probably helpful to first bring it back, go back this direction to here so that uh, this angle is between, uh, well, it's within one revolution, right? So if we, if we take away this revolution here, we'll just have this little bit. Um, so that full revolution is 2 pi. So if we take 11 pi over 4 and we take away that revolution of 2 pi, subtract 2 pi. Uh, of course, we need a common denominator, so 11 pi over 4 minus uh, 8 pi over 4. That's going to be 3 pi over 4. So this little angle right here is 3 pi over 4. And now we can find the reference angle for 3 pi over 4, which actually it turns out we just did. The reference angle for 3 pi over 4 is pi over 4. So our reference angle is pi over 4. Uh, and so if this has a, an x comma y, then this has a negative x comma y. It has the opposite of this x. Um, 
So if we want to know the sine, so the sine of 11 pi over 4, that's going to be the same as the sine of 3 pi over 4, because they are coterminal, they're in the exact same place. Um, and then that sine will be the same as the sine of pi over 4, because, let's go all the way back to the top here, the sine is y over r. Right? And this y is, is, is positive, just like this y is positive. So it's going to be the same sign, and this r is always going to be positive. So the sign is going to be the same. If we uh, look at that reference on page, um, what was it, 291, then we see that the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Root 2 over 2. Okay, now that we, when we go over to the cosine of 11 pi over 4, that's going to be a different story. It's going to, um, you see that the cosine is going to be x over r, and for pi over 4, uh, that, that x that we take over r, that x is positive, but here it's negative, so it'll be the exact same. Uh, it'll be the same ratio of the x value over the r value, except for our x value for 11 pi over 4 will be negative. So it'll be the same as the cosine of pi over 4, only the x value will be negative. So we'll take this, uh, you know, it'll make that whole fraction negative. So we'll take the cosine of pi over 4, we'll just make it negative, and then we'll have the cosine of 11 pi over 4. And if you look at your reference uh, on, on that same page, 291, you see the cosine is root 2 over 2, so the cosine of 11 pi over 4 is negative root 2 over 2. And the tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Um, how's the tangent going to compare? Well, that's y over x. Here, y is positive and x is positive, so we get positive. Here, y is positive, but x is negative, so we're going to get a negative tangent. The tangent of 11 pi over 4, 11 pi over 4, is going to be the negative tangent of pi over 4, which is going to be negative 1. All right. And that's it. They just want the sine, cosine, and tangent. So on to 71. The sine of theta is equal to 2 fifths. And the cosine of theta is less than zero. It's negative. And which is to the, they want us to use the given value of the trigonometric identities uh, and the trigonometric identities to find the remaining trigonometric functions of the angle. Uh, so if the um, if the sine is two fifths, uh, then we know that the cosecant. That's an easy one. Has to be equal to five halves. Um, all right. Uh, if the sine is two fifths, that means that y over r has to be a positive number, which means y has to be positive, which means that our angle must either be here, right? Uh, th either this is theta, uh, and this is a, a, our y over r would be a positive y over r, or our angle would be over here, and it would be the exact, it would have the exact same angle between the horizontal and the terminal side. Um, the only difference would be, uh, I mean, it does have a positive y, but it has a negative x. Um, and what they're telling here, telling us here is that the cosine of this angle is less than 1. Uh, the cosine is x over r, and x is negative here. So negative x, or negative value over positive uh, y, or, or r value, would give us a negative cosine. So... The cosine of this angle would be the x, which is negative, over r. Uh, so our sine is, uh, is 2 over 5, which tells us that y must be 2 and r is 5. Uh, so what would x be? Well, we could just take 25 squared minus, or not 25 squared, just 25, because that's 5 squared. Let's just start again. 25 is 5 squared. 5 squared minus...
minus 2 squared equals x squared. Um, and 5 squared is 25. And 2 squared is 4. That's equal to x squared. Uh, 25 minus 4 is 21. And that's equal to x uh, squared. We take the square root of x. And remember, whenever we take the square root of uh, both sides, we, we usually say plus or minus. We haven't been saying plus or minus because it didn't really make sense in, in the context of a triangle. But now we know x is negative, and so negative root 21 is our x value. So the cosine is negative root 21 over r, which is 5. Uh, we could do the secant of theta. That's going to be the reciprocal here. That's going to be negative 5 over root 21, which will give us negative 5 root 21 over 21. Um, do the tangent, which is y over x. Now we know y is 2, and x is negative root 21. 2 over negative root 21 is going to be... Uh, negative 2 root 21 over 21. And the cotangent is just going to be the reciprocal, so we'll do negative root 21 over 2. All right. Uh, so now we use this information here to decide basically what quadrant we're in and then fill in the blanks from there. Um, let's do another like that, 75. If the cosecant of some angle theta is equal to negative 3 halves, and tangent, the tangent of that angle, is less than 0, the tangent is negative, then we want to find all the, the missing pieces, so we'll draw ourselves a little picture. Um, our angle is, its cosecant is negative. The cosecant is the, uh, is r over uh, y. So r over y is going to give us a negative 3 halves. So the y, r is always going to be positive, so it must be the y that's negative. So that means we're down here somewhere. We're either uh, maybe this guy here or this guy over here, right? Either it's this angle or it could be this angle. Uh, because both of these, if you put a point here, we can get the mirror image over here. And so um, we get a negative y value, negative y value. Only difference is this x is positive and this x is negative. And what it's telling us is that the tangent is less than 0. It's negative. So the uh, y over x, that's tangent, is y over x, opposite over adjacent. Uh, y over x is negative. So that must mean that. Uh, when you take y over x, you get a negative number, negative number, so one of them is positive, one of them is negative. We know from the cosecant, we just said that y is negative. So if x were also negative, then negative y over negative x would be positive. But that's not what it says. Tangent needs to be negative. So we must be over here. So this must be uh, a positive value, comma, negative, um, negative 2. And then our r value is 3. And then we can find the... Uh, the x value by taking 3 squared minus negative 2 squared, uh, and that's equal to x squared. So 9 minus 4 equals x squared, 5 equals x squared, x equals the positive square root of 5, because we are in the fourth quadrant, and x's are positive in the fourth quadrant. So square root of 5. So we've got the, uh, the cosecant. We could then find the sine. That would be easy enough. It would just be the reciprocal. It would be negative 2 thirds. Uh, we could find the cosine. Now that we have everything, that's going to be x over r. x is root 5 over r, which is 3. When we have the cosine, we can usually find the secant. It's just the reciprocal. That's 3 over root 5. That's 3 root 5 over 5. Here we can find the tangent of the angle, and that would be y over x, that would be negative 2 over root 5. And we rationalize the denominator, negative 2 root 5 over 5, and find the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent, and we could just make that negative root 5 over 2, just the reciprocal of this guy here. All right. Um, now let's move on to 77. 
this is. Just simple, simple stuff here. Just use the calculator, make sure you're in the right mode. That's what it comes down to. Find the sine of 10 degrees, of 10 degrees. Is the calculator thinking this is degrees or radians? We'll go find out what's, what's in its brain right now. It's thinking radians. We want to tell it, think degrees. And so now it knows it's sine of 10 degrees. And so uh, we want to report this to uh, four decimal places. Uh, so four decimal places would be 0.1736. Um, let's do 88, the cosine of negative 15 pi over 14. What's that? Well, let's bring up the calculator. We're going to say cosine of negative 15 pi over 14. Uh, making sure that the calculator knows we're talking about radians. So we'll switch back over to radians, hit enter, and now we have negative 0.9749. Negative 0.9749. All right. Um, last one, yeah, last one. Number 93. Um, part A give us is that the secant of some angle is negative 2 root 3 over 3. Okay, what are we doing? Find two solutions of the equation. Give your answers in degrees uh, and radians. And we want to make sure that our degrees are between 0 and 360, and our radians are between 0 and 2 pi. So basically, be, uh, within one full revolution. Um, so the secant of some angle is negative 2 root 3 over 3. So we need to find an angle that has a secant of negative, root, negative 2 root 3 over 3. Um, the secant, let's remember the secant uh, is 1 over the, uh, 1 over the cosine of theta. It's the reciprocal of the cosine. So the reciprocal of this would be 3 over negative 2 root 3. So the reason I'm doing this uh, is... Um, excuse me, what I should have done was 1 over the cosine is, is still negative 2 root 3 over 3, but the cosine, the cosine is uh, the reciprocal of the secant. So uh, the reason I'm doing this is because I know that if we're not going to use our calculator, we should use uh, things that um, are, are really common. Uh, commonly memorized or um, are easily to look up. And if we look on page 291 again, we can look up these uh, common sine, cosine, and tangent values, not secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So we'll take the secant, we'll learn what the cosine is, because the secant and the cosine have this reciprocal relationship. Um, and if we rationalize the denominator here, we'll get 3 root 3 over negative 2 times 3, we'll cancel out those 3's, and we'll get negative root 3 over 2. So um, we look at page 291, and we find an angle that has uh, a cosine of negative root 3 over 2. So um, let's see, a cosine of negative root 3 over 2. We don't find that, but we do find a cosine of root 3 over 2 find a cosine of root 3 over 2 at 30 degrees, or pi over 6 radians. Uh, so at 30 degrees, we have the, uh, the cosine of 30 degrees is root 3 over 2. Okay, And if the cosine is x over r, then this x we could think of as, as as root 3 and they are as 2, where would we find a negative root 3 over 2? Uh, well, that would be where the x is negative. That would be over here. Okay, and this, is, this angle is uh, obviously 30 degrees above the horizontal, and so that angle would actually be 150 degrees. From here to there would be 150 degrees. So there's one solution. 150 degrees has a cosine of negative root 3 over 2. Um, 
If the cosine is negative root 3 over 2, that means the secant is negative 2 root 3 over 3, because the cosine and the secant are the reciprocals. So 150, and not just 150, but any other angle that has a negative root 3 as its x, well, this, this angle down here would also have an x of negative root 3, uh, right, with the same radius of 2, 2. So that angle B, well, that'd be 30 degrees below the horizontal here, so that'd be 180 plus 30, so that would be 210 degrees. So this would be 210 degrees. So for this problem here, our solutions are 150 degrees, uh, or, well, that's, let's not put a slash, let's put a comma, or 210 degrees. Um, also, we could uh, give those in radians. So how many radians, radians is 150 degrees? Uh, if you have been um, memorizing those things, then you'll know that 150 degrees is the same as, let's see, 5 pi over 6. And that 210 is 7 pi over 6. The way I did that, I just counted out. I know this is pi over 6, so I know all the way over here would be 6 pi over 6. This would be 6 pi over 6, same as pi. So 1 up from there would be 5 pi over 6. This would be 7 pi over 6. So that's what they're looking for right there. Uh, so it takes a little creativity, but uh, it's doable. There is a part B, so let's do part B. B to this problem is that some angle has a cosine. The cosine of this angle is negative one half. All right. So the cos this is easier. Cosine is negative one half. Now, if we look on two ninety one, um, we again we won't find a cosine of negative one half, but we will see that there is a cosine of positive one half at sixty degrees. 60 degrees, we know that the cosine of 60 degrees is equal to 1 half. Uh, well then, another angle over here that's the mirror image is 60 degrees above this horizontal. Right? If this much is 60 degrees, uh, then it has uh, the same cosine, only it's going to be negative because the cosine is x over r. We could think of this x as 1 and this r as 2, so this would have an x uh, that's a mirror image. This would be negative 1 and this r would be 2 as well. So the cosine would be negative 1 half and that angle is going to be 60 degrees above this horizontal, 60 degrees away from 180, so this would be 120. So 120 degrees. Uh, also, this guy right here would also have a negative 1 for its x, and it could have a, um, a 2 for its r, and so it also has a cosine of 1 half. It's 60 degrees below the horizontal, so that's 180 plus 60, so that's 240 degrees. So that's two solutions in degrees that's between 0 and 360. Um, now let's look at uh, radians. It's just converting degrees to radians, no big deal. So this would be 2 pi over 3. And 240 would be the same as 4 pi over 3. All right, so those are some solutions to those equations. Um, and that's everything. That's reference angles and, uh, and looking at sine and cosine and tangent in terms of of an x comma y coordinate and we're gonna take that and make it kinda of useful very useful incredibly useful actually for us in 4.2 where we develop something called the unit circle the unit circle is a great reference for um, those common angles 30 60 90 45 uh, 270 you know multiples of 30 degrees 60 degrees and 45 degrees um, as well as 90 degrees um, and it makes it real simple fairly easy to memorize all those values which we will use constantly throughout our math career uh, here in calculus and beyond so uh, it'll be worth your time to memorize that and uh, well I'll see you there thanks for watching